Well, hi there. There is something to love about every reptile on the planet, but being entertaining is not necessarily one of those things. And that works great in nature as it saves a lot of energy and allows the reptile to avoid detection, but it isn't exactly the most stimulating thing to watch. You're not doing anything, are you, buddy? But there are a few reptiles out there that are unbelievably engaging. And these five are five of the absolute most entertaining reptiles that you can get. What makes them so engaging, and also the reasons why you might not want to get one. First on our list are monitor lizards. These are very engaging reptiles. And part of this is because of the way that they breathe. Lizards, as it turns out, use the same muscles in their chests to run and to breathe. But they use those muscles in different ways. And this means that they can either run or breathe, but they can't do both at the same time. Can you imagine what soccer would look like if the players had to hold their breath whenever they were running? I can, and it's hilarious. I kind of want to invent this sport. But the thing is that lizards cannot be highly active because anytime they scamper around, they then need to spend a considerable amount of time recovering, unless they're monitor lizards. Monitor lizards do have this same problem. They can only expand their chest cavities to create a vacuum, negative pressure, to breathe when they are not running. But pulling air into your lungs is only one way to do it. You can also push air into your lungs like frogs do, or like monitors do, using your neck and mouth muscles to push air into your lungs, what is called Euler pumping. What this means is that monitor lizards can run and breathe at the same time, and they don't need to be short dash only lizards, and they're not. Monitor lizards generally require high temperatures and subsequently keep a high body temperature, eat a lot, and explore extensively. <laughs> they're also highly intelligent. For all intents and purposes, these are warm-blooded animals. But because that warmth doesn't come from the food that they eat, as it does with homeotherms like birds and mammals, they avoid many of the downsides of birds and mammals. They are amazingly engaging and fun. But they're not for everyone. For one thing, many of them are large. And even smaller, more reasonable ones like Ackies require a lot of space. They eat other animals, and in large numbers, so that's not for everyone, certainly. They need very high temperatures, which is expensive and a minor fire risk. They are intelligent and require a lot of mental stimulation, and they're capable of inflicting some pretty serious injuries for lizards their size. And for some of them, like croc monitors, Asian water monitors, Nile monitors, Komodo dragons, or even Argus monitors, like Raptor here, they could put you in the hospital. Or worse. If that's a deal breaker for you, good news! There are four more great options on this list. Next on our list are some of my favorite reptiles. Heck, basically everything on this list are my favorite reptiles, but these might be number one. Common snapping turtles! This is an animal I have often described as being like shelled, highly aquatic monitor lizards. I love them so much. And I think most people overlook them. For one thing, they're often overshadowed by their even more hardcore looking relatives, the alligator snapping turtles. But when it comes to being entertaining, these guys absolutely blow their cousins out of the water. Which isn't much of a contest, since alligator snapping turtles live their lives like a bear trap, and as such are about as entertaining to watch as a bear trap. Common snapping turtles, on the other hand, are active, curious, intelligent aquatic hunters. They are so curious and full of personality. And even though they might bite you if you get too close, they always seem happy to see you anytime you step into the room. I love them. But they do have some downsides for sure. Water turtles are a pain in the neck. A water turtle needs to be super worth it before they're worth keeping, especially if it's a huge messy turtle that requires a huge filtered aquatic enclosure. Most, in my opinion, are not worth it. Common snapping turtles are the clearest exception. They also can bite, probably not as hard as you might think, but hard enough that you don't want to be bitten. 
And they can reach a lot more of their own bodies than most turtles, including their short-necked finger-snipping cousins. So you need to know how to handle them. And by the way, if you don't have a snapping turtle as nice as Boba Chunk, the way I've been handling him, that's not the way to do it. Nipper, would like to just say thank you so much to all of our patrons at Patreon who make content like this possible. We really, really appreciate all that you do for us. And if you'd be interested in supporting content like this in the future, or you just want to see some of the amazing features we've got for our patrons, please consider checking it out. Isn't that right, Nipper? Yeah, you're a good boy. But not in a friendly way. If these first two engaging pet reptiles seem a bit too dangerous, I have good news. Two of the last three on this list are not dangerous at all. And, and one could kill you. But two out of the three isn't too bad. Next on our list are chameleons. Chameleons have never made a top five list on this channel before. And there's a good reason for that. But when it comes to being engaging pet reptiles, chameleons are very engaging indeed. For starters, they're endearingly weird. So strange and so adorable. This makes up for how grumpy they are. They're adorably grumpy. You could start anywhere, but I'll start at the tail. Most species have a long prehensile tail that they often hold curled up in a perfect spiral. Adorable. Their body is like a slinky. It can be very short and then stretch very long when they're reaching for a new branch. Their toes are bundled into a mitten claw that turned out so much cuter than it did on the penguin. And we haven't even discussed their heads yet. Their heads are full of adorably engaging features. Shall we talk about those eyes? Most of the time, they're looking in two different directions, only coming together so that they have the depth perception required to employ what is probably the most fascinating feature on any lizard, that bonkers tongue. That insane tongue is generally one and a half to two times the length of their entire body, sometimes longer. And it can be rocketed at prey like a tethered missile. I think I've made my case, but they're also super active, beautiful, and can change color to reflect their mood, their nature's mood ring. Unfortunately, if they see you or another chameleon or a mirror, that mood is usually some form of grumpy. Generally, they do not like to be handled, being both insectivorous and active, they eat a lot of insects. Fortunately, that is about the coolest thing ever to watch. But most importantly, care is very involved for chameleons. They are not hardy and can stress and die easily with care mistakes. And they don't generally live very long, even under the best of circumstances. And that is why they've never been on a top five list before. But there was just no keeping them off of this one. Now, I promised you one more non-dangerous animal, but this isn't it. This is the reticulated python. This one, Athena, comes to us from Reach Out Reptiles, which is where I would recommend that you get a reticulated python because not all retics are created equal. Retics are one of the most engaging snakes on the planet. Like most snakes, they're only moderately interesting while inside of their enclosures, but once they come out, Man, this is probably the most engaging snake I've ever held. These are active snakes that will explore. And being a visual snake, it is just much easier to get into their headspace. You can look into their eyes and see what they're all about. I have concluded, at least at this point, that if I could only have one snake, it would be a reticulated python. But I told you that not all retics are created equal. And that is because retics are, Interestingly enough, the longest snakes on the planet and the only snakes ever documented to have eaten a person. They could definitely kill you. And any bite from a large retic is gonna be, well, terrible. They have big, sharp teeth, as it turns out. Not to mention the fact that even when they're being good, handling an adult retic is far more exhausting than it is entertaining. Their exploratory, inquisitive nature just turns into a wrestling match that you're unlikely to win. But there are island populations where the retics stay much smaller and much more manageable. Athena here is the descendant of these island retics called dwarf and super dwarf retics. And that is what Reach Out Reptiles has been dedicated to working with since before anyone could see why you would even want a small retic. 
It's because retics are amazing. They just get too big. Instead of livestock, they'll eat rodents. They're easier to house and, uh, you know, they can't kill you. It isn't like pet giant snakes actually kill people very often, but the risk is there. But not with the dwarves. They still eat rodents, uh, and they are snakes. And Athena here destroyed my computer with her pee, and has altered outfits in the same way. But she's amazing. And last but not least is an animal that I think I need to put on every top five list, because they are so unspeakably amazing. But these are emerald tree skinks. They're not realistic. I mean, seriously, why would a little lizard be like this? They love people. They literally leap from their enclosure to come hang out with you. And once they're out, they're just exploring and being as entertaining as they possibly can be. That isn't to say that they aren't entertaining in their enclosures as well, but once they see you, they generally drop whatever it was that they were doing and they start trying to get to you. And did I mention that this is how wild-caught adults act? Well, it is. And this is the problem with these guys. Until recently, they were unknown in the hobby and captive bred individuals were exceedingly difficult to come by. And while taking in regulated numbers of reptiles to put into the hands of experienced breeders is okay with me, this isn't a healthy or sustainable source for them as pets. But some guy on YouTube started telling everyone how great these are and suddenly tons of breeders are working with them and producing captive bred babies. And that includes me. I predict that within the next few years, these will become one of the most popular pet lizards. It's basically the care of a crested gecko, but the interaction of a rat, except that all the poop. They're amazing and everybody should have one. And that makes five incredibly engaging pet reptiles and why they might not be for you, except for captive bred emerald tree skinks. If you're watching this video, they're for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Okay, here, you wanna climb up there? You wanna climb up on my head? On my shoulder? Scratch his face. Yeah, scratch my face if you can. At the very least, mess up my hair and poop on my shoulder. Monitor lizards do have, hey you. Oh. Okay. Get now I look great. <laughs> oh, Bubba, you are such perfection. You're such perfection. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't do anything like that. I can even put one of your hands in between my two hands and a lot of times they'll jump across. <laughs> <laughs> you come? You're such a 